Hello, it's me. And oh, first things first, this is not my bedroom. Um, I feel like people are wondering. It's not. This is just an extra room in our house, which is why it looks so uh, like plain, and there's stuff just like being stored. But uh, and that's my girl cat Miko. So anywho, <laughs> now that that's out of the way, um, I just wanted to touch on something um, <clears throat> that I actually talked about maybe f five years ago, um, and I'll link that video down below. And that video was about um, talking about extremist Christian views and then asking yourself if you're an extremist pagan. I'm just saying. But I'll link that below, and I do highly suggest you check it out. So with that said, I, I want to talk about Christianity and the bad rap that it gets, um, which is f fair and unfair. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so first and foremost, let's just point out the elephant in the room. <laughs> and that is that Christianity in of itself it's kind of bizarre that it exists the way it exists like where it came from and by the people who push it um western people have a really laid claim to christianity and decided that they do not like people that are from the regions in which christianity originated which is so weird <laughs> um and which we see that in artwork of like Jesus Christ. He's depicted now to be very fair skinned, um, completely clean shaven, a long amber colored hair, blue eyes a lot of the times, and very um, Anglican features, which would be so historically inaccurate if he was a real person. But given the place in which he was supposed to be living, he would not look like that. <laughs> so that's already bizarre. <clears throat> also, <laughs> the people in the Bible that Christians reference all the time and that they preach about relentlessly on their Sunday services were not even Christians. No one in the Bible is a Christian. Not even Jesus. <laughs> There's no Christians in the Holy Bible. <laughs> Let that sink in. There are actually several different religions present in the Bible, but obviously we're specifically going to focus on Jews, Judaism. Also, they're called Hebrews in the Bible, if, that, if you didn't know. So Jesus... And all of the disciples of Christ, who is Jesus, were Jews. They were brought up in Judaism. So Christianity is an offshoot of Judaism, whether Christians want to admit it or not. Okay? Christianity comes from Judaism, but not the other way around. Now, it's weird also that Christians, um, not all, m most of them not, but you know, there are some that call themselves Christian that do not like Jews or the idea of Judaism and discredit it as a way to worship God with a capital G. In Christianity, God has like no name. Well, he has many names, but we don't use them. I say we. It's still in there, you guys, being raised Christian as a child. But uh, you don't use the names in, in the Christianity that I was brought up in. So, <laughs> the Bible itself has been revised so many times. Some Christians would tell you that that's not true. However science, history, written history, 
documented history can tell us otherwise. Facts are facts. So the reason the Bible, the Holy Bible, is called the King James Bible is because an actual man named King James decided to re-edit the Bible the way he saw fit. So already, Christians are using a Bible that was totally different than what it was initially supposed to be anyway. Even after that, it was edited again by the Catholic Church at large, but it also was beforehand. This is where we get things like the Gospel of Judas, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene, the Book of Enoch, um, all these books that weren't included in the original Bible. So I say all that to bring up one of the most divisive people in all of Christianity. Can you hear my cats fighting? They've been like so at it today. So, one of the most divisive people, not the pharaohs, although they're pretty divisive, obviously, um, not the Romans, not even Satan himself. We're talking about Lilith. Lilith. Most of us as pagans probably already know which, pause, <laughs> when I say pagans, I'm using that as a blanket statement. I know not all of you might identify with that word. But for me, pagan just means anyone who practices any of the like occult paths. So anyone who's like a Wiccan or a witch um, or a warlock or a shaman, um, anyone who follows a Satru, Thelema, uh, Druidry, any of that. I just call that paganism. Anywho, unpause. So Lilith, um, most of us probably already know her as some, some kind of a goddess, but you might not know exactly what she is, or you might have only heard that she's like a demon or a dark goddess, um, a goddess of feminism. Um, you might have heard the stories that she's just like, you know, this demon who kills children. You, you might not know anything beyond that. Um, but Lilith is someone who is present in the Torah and in the Bible <laughs> if we go back before all of these giant changes. So originally in the Holy Bible, specifically in the Old Testament, the Holy Bible is divided into two books, the Old Testament and the New Testament, focusing on the Old Testament. In the book of Genesis, which is the very first book in the Holy Bible, God, well, a third person, tells you that God created all this stuff. And eventually he got to humans. And he created Adam and Eve from, uh, well, he created Adam from clay, and then he creates Eve, but let me backtrack. So originally, he creates... Adam and Lilith. He creates a man and a woman from clay. From clay. Of the earth. He creates them both from clay. In his image. People are created in his image. Right? So, is his image Adam? Or is his image Lilith? Male or female? And if they're both created in his image, is God both genders? Is he neither gender? Mm. So, if we assume that God is male, since we always use he pronouns, then Adam must be created in his image. So already we're having a problem with Lilith in this story. Already. Already. Okay? Well, the story continues, and I encourage you to go read it, but that Lilith 
becomes very upset with Adam because every time they engage in sexual intercourse, Adam wants to control her. He wants to be the dominant one, the one who's guiding the lovemaking. You get what I'm saying. Lilith goes to God and she's like, hey, I'm like really frustrated because every time Adam and I go to have sex, he wants to be on top of me. He wants to like assert his dominance over me during sexual intercourse. And I'm not really feeling that. Like, I don't want that. What, can we do something different, please? Can I, can I be dominant during sex sometimes? Like, that would be great. She innocently asks this of God. She's not like, yo, bitch. Like, you know what I'm saying? No. She's just like, hey, this ain't, this isn't my tea. And in return, God, who, pause. In the New Testament, God is all about love and forgiveness and understanding. But this is the Old Testament where God never exhibits any of those qualities. He exhibits um, jealousy, anger, rage, judgment. Although, to his credit, he admits that he has these qualities in the Old Testament. He's like, sorry about it. <laughs> well, he's like, not sorry about it. Anywho, unpause. So God doesn't respond <laughs> in the New Testament way, because this is the Old Testament. This is actually the Old Old Testament, because it's not the edited Old Testament. And God says, get up, get out of my garden. Because <laughs> if you remember, they were living in the Garden of Eden, this paradise. So he said, get out, <laughs> get out, how dare you, get out. That's his response, which is crazy. So he kicks Lilith out but to just kick her out side of this paradise isn't enough for some reason he kicks her out into this wasteland that is ruled by Satan's minions Cause at this point Lucifer has already fall already fell to hell and has become Satan and there's all these like demons and like these reverse sides of what an angel is right these bad things this evil, pure evil, just roaming the other parts of the earth, apparently. Because God just wants this one pretty part. So she's sent out there to fend for herself. And that's still not enough. He kicks her out into this unknown space. And then he curses. This, well, this is where it gets a little different. Some versions, he does this in versions. He does not. Because, again, this is mythology. This is folklore we're talking about, just like in paganism. It's been rewritten so many times. It's been carried down orally by so many people. So many people have added their own things and taken away parts they didn't like. So anywho. In many versions, he also curses her womb, where she will never be able to conceive children, ever. She will be taking that gift of womanhood from her. So he's taking away her, he's shunning her power. He's saying, you can't have equality to men, but also you can't even have the ability to have, to have children, because that must be something that women covet, which is not necessarily true. But we know that now in 2021. So she's sent out there on her own. From there, many stories say that she got very angry at God. And some people can say that she teamed up with Satan and became like his equal, like a Sataness. Some people say that she just works under Satan and she becomes a demon, but like an arch demon. And some say that she becomes the world's very first succubus. A succubus is a female uh, presenting spirit who comes to you at night and steals a male's semen and has unholy children with it. There's also a male version called an incubus. Anywho, some people say she becomes that. Regardless, she's turned into something that you should not appreciate, should not like, should not venerate. <laughs> Cue witches who obviously cling to that, but <laughs> we're like, oh, that sounds awesome. Uh, but anywho, so we're sending a clear note to anyone reading this Bible or this Torah that what she did was not okay because God said so. And you, God's word is law, literally. His word is law. 
So there's no arguing with God. He is the creator. He's the the final say so. He created he he made you. What he says goes. And he says women can't be challenging their men. You can't do it. So go away. So then God creates Eve. Okay? But to show all of humankind coming forward or afterward, but also to show Adam that, yeah, women are beneath you. He takes a rib from Adam, which is how I think how they came up to try to explain why men have like this extra rib. But anyway, he takes a rib from Adam and he creates Eve from that. So now we have a woman being born from a man, which is already weird because as we know, women, females, regardless of whether they're women, but the feminine body is made to give birth, not the male body. So we have this subversion of life giving, which sends a lot of weird mixed messages but ultimately, this is done to show that women are beneath men. And that Eve, you came from Adam, and Adam came from me. So you're down the totem pole. But Eve never retaliates, and she just seems to be a good, submissive woman. And history goes forward. So Lilith. Obviously, if you read it in that context, Lilith is an incredibly sympathetic figure if you're a feminist or if you just aren't a misogynist which I hope if you're watching this you're not um, Lilith just wanted equality that's it she wanted equality that's it now in modern day paganism Lilith has been turned into like a goddess of sorts or spirit depending on what definition you want to give her I guess but Lilith is this goddess. She is a dark goddess, which, of course, we know in paganism, darkness does not denote the con does not denote evil. There is no evil in paganism, mostly. That would be by case by case personal definitions. But there is no evil, pure evil, in paganism. So when we say darkness, we just mean something that is not all love and light and like woo positivity. It's something that has uh, negative emotions in it, something that embraces shadows. So Lilith is this dark goddess who is all about uh, f feminism, certainly, female empowerment, empowerment of those regardless of gender that are the underdog, those who are, you know, held down, the persecuted, Definitely, those people fall under Lilith's reign. Um, Lilith is about speaking up for yourself, finding a voice. Lilith is many things to many people. But I bring all this up just to say, always question everything you read. Even pagan myths. Don't assume that these are true, factual, historical events. Okay? Christian historians have labeled our history as mythology, but neglected to do it to their own. It's mythology. None of this, when I say this, I mean mythology. None of it probably happened historically on this earth at all. In fact, most of us pagans would say none of it has actually ever physically happened on the planet. Like Zeus and them didn't roam this in physical bodies. Now, some of you may believe that, and that's absolutely fine but for most of us and when I when I say most of us not even just pagans just people in general except that none of this actually happened here these are parables these are stories or you can believe that they do exist just in another realm but that's another conversation anywho Christianity has mythology in it 
So just like pagan mythology, there are so many different versions. And again, I make this entire video <laughs> just to ramble really, because I wanted to talk about it. But also just to kind of pique your interest that there there is stuff in Christianity that is fascinating. Regardless if Christianity has been used to persecute you or not, at some point I think you owe it to yourself to go and research Christianity even if just from a scholarly standpoint without bias from your own upbringing and experiences. Because Christianity has a lot of stuff to learn from. A lot of gods and goddesses and God has a wife in the original myths, but that would be a whole nother video. Spoiler alert. <laughs> God had a goddess that was with him. Anywho, Lilith, Eve, Christianity, it's wild. It's wild. <laughs>